taking on a, a topic like this would it'd be hard for it not to affect a lot of parts of your life, just the way that you look at the whole world. Was there something that really sticks out in your mind? Yeah, I, I think I became more angry <laughs> because, you know, the, the problem is very hard to be confronted on this kind of suffering, you know, and and I would say, you know, does it, you know, it's some issues that I knew fairly well, so it's not, but there is still matters that I probably had not realized as much as I did, you know, doing the film, like, for example, how much the land is the number one resource, you know, I of course it sounds logical of course because we grow food on land and we walk on land and we use land to live and etc but you know i never realized how essential it was because you know take the land away from from someone and you created a poor per person it's as automatic as that you know as long as people that have land to grow their own food and build their house and graze their cattle they're fine you know course problem happen all the time but you know they are fine you know you take the land away and it's gone so that made me realize much more than I thought the what colonialism had done you know it's like and and you know what is interesting is to see that we kept control of the land one way of the land one way or another for example I interviewed I interviewed a very interesting person who is not in the film again you know we published this big book called why global poverty because at the end I was so frustrated by having you know we came back with 100 hours of footage and we had tons of interview that sometimes we put one or two minutes of an hour and a half interview sometimes we didn't put it at all because we could not and I was so frustrated that we decided to publish a big book you know with all these interviews in extenso of expert and poor people and and the transcript of the film so people can really do some research and look at all what these people say but the the story was that I interviewed one of the leader historical leader of the Mao Mao rebellion in Kenya you know the one who threw the British out and he's 83 or 84 years old something like that and he said he said you know what he said we were very naive because we thought you know the Mao Mao rebellion started as a movement to take back the land and give it back to people of course and he said that he said we were very naive because when we managed to get independence for Kenya, we th we thought it's great, that's it. We not only the British are gone, but we'll get all land back, which is wonderful. And he said we were not only naive, but we were very stupid because we didn't think that all land was very important for the colonial power and that they had already a plan to keep control of the land. And what happened? He said. They transferred, you know, I think at the time it was more than 80% of the arable land was in the end of white, uh, of white settlers. And he said they transferred the land from this white minority to a black mi minority, which, which was of course close to their colonial power and would continue the same policy of growing food for export, etc. You know, and, and, and he said the result is that not only we get, didn't get the land back, but we are still starving to this day. You know, and we still have a hard time to get our daily bread, I quote, you know, and and that is a very interesting thing because, of course, we, you know, in the north, we see uh, Jomo Kenyatta, who was the, the first president of, of independent Kenya as great liberator and this and that. He became the biggest landowner in Kenya. That's what he became, you know, and we always, you know, so I learned a lot in that how, you know, how in fact, nothing changed in 500 years. We just changed the tools. You know, it's not white minority, it's black minority. It's not, you know, the gun who forced people out of the land. It's international debt or it's, uh, you know, it, but it's, that's what the most, sh the, most, the most shocking to me was to see this permanent system. And, you know, trust me, I'm not a conspiracy theory person. It's not that I think that the conquistador said, oh, you know, that will be the plan for 500 years. And, you know, no, of course not. But, you know, but we, they created a system which, which remained for 500 years, which is, or economies need the resource of the South, and there's nothing else we can do about it, you know, unless we change the system, you know, and that was the most striking to me, yeah.